Howdy, it's Jim Murado, and we, well actually we're about to go to Fort Granger in Franklin, Tennessee. Wanted to give a quick mention though to one of my favorite coffee shops, the Frothy Monkey in Franklin, Tennessee. Small chain, mostly around Nashville, but this is just such a great coffee shop. We stopped there for breakfast several times. That was my breakfast one morning, and man was it good. Franklin, Tennessee, they've got a lot of um, a lot of Civil War history. I know a lot of country music and other celebrities live in that area. And we have found ourselves there a few times here over the last uh, last couple of years. Just a great town. One of the best cups of coffee I've ever had in my life, period. It's a decaf Americano with oat milk and a little sugar, and it is perfect. And my wife, who's really healthy, uh, really loves the oatmeal there. So anyway, I just wanted to mention Frothy Monkey, especially the one in Franklin. We love that place. But this particular morning, we ended up going to Fort Granger in Franklin, and it's an old Civil War fort. Very well preserved. It's small, but it is nice. We took a false turn back there. There's a, a road that uh, our GPS led us to. And we could have gotten there. We would have had to have parked in some private businesses, parking spots. We didn't want to do that. So we just uh, we drove on up here. We found a nice little parking space, uh, nice parking lot. Good view of the city, but you get to see the fort. There are, this is Franklin. This is close to Nashville, close enough to Nashville that um, it is hard to preserve land. Land has a lot of value through here. Thank goodness, though, there are some nicely preserved spots from the Civil War like Fort Granger and yeah I guess uh, yeah we took a little walk and there's nice nice little trails and some little kind of off trail areas you could walk through nice paved path as you can see there kind of on the left there's a stairway up to it but it's it's a it's just a nice I mean you're you're outdoors and it's a nice trail and you can kind of get an idea of what's going on and you can get an idea of what was going on here during the Civil War and as you can see lots of digging lots of moving dirt that's what Civil War forts are all about anyway yeah so just just watch I just kind of randomly film here and there I do go out to the wooded area a little bit just to give you an idea of that but let me go ahead and just read to you from some of the signs around the fort and there's several Located along Figures Bluff overlooking the Harpeth River, this federal fort, named for Union Major General Gordon Granger, was well situated to control transportation in and out of Franklin. U.S. Corps of Engineers Captain William E. Merrill supervised the fort's construction beginning early in 1863. By that time, the federal occupation of Middle Tennessee was entering its second year. Numerous small engagements had already taken place in and around Triune, Franklin, Brentwood, Nolensville, Thompson Station, and Spring Hill. In February, Union General William S. Rosecrans ordered Granger to build the Franklin Fort to protect the railroad and garrison the town. In March, Granger reported, Fortifications will be done in about one week, about ten days rations, and 150 to each man on hand. No infantry coming in. Good night. Am sick and tired out. Had no sleep for weeks. The fort took 10 weeks to complete. Fort Granger housed 7,900 federal soldiers and 2,700 cavalrymen. Multiple campsites, drill fields, sentry posts, and storage facilities dotted once open fields northeast and west of the fort, including barracks in the town. A contraband camp for escaped slaves stood near the fort. Battery crews drilled at least once a week, firing the cannons for practice. On April 10, 1863, the battery used the cannons in combat during a Franklin reconnaissance raid by Confederate Generals Nathan Bedford Forrest and Earl Van Dorn. By May, Fort Granger contained six large siege guns, including two 24-pounder howitzers and 24 smaller field cannon. On June 4th through 5th, the guns defended against Confederate cavalry on the outskirts of town. By mid-1863, Rosecrans had moved much of his army to Lahoma. Detached regiments continued to man the fort from June 1863 to May 1865. 
During the Battle of Franklin on November 3, 1864, Union General John M. Schofield observed the fighting from Fort Granger. Uh, so that's one of the signs. And just walking around a little more. And this is a good walk. Like I said, we saw other people walking here. If you've not been to Franklin, it is just a charming, wonderful little town on its own. And there's uh, historic markers and stuff all over the town. I'll put up another video about it. And I'll read to you a little bit from another sign. Fort Granger Walking Tour Introduction. Welcome to Fort Granger. The fort's position atop Figures Bluff allowed the Union Army to command the town of Franklin as well as the road and railroad that served Nashville. The 84th Indiana Infantry was among the regiments that improved and manned the fort. The unit arrived here from Nashville early in March 1863 and camped beyond the fort and railroad. The following month, Dr. Samuel S. Boyd, the regimental surgeon, drew this invaluable map. It shows the locations of headquarters, military and contraband camps, and other nearby earthworks. Boyd resigned on March 23, 1865. Within a few weeks of the 84th's arrival, it lost men to sickness. The healthier soldiers patrolled the countryside, guarding crossroads and skirmishing with conf Confederate raiders. By June, the 84th had been transferred south to campaign around Tullahoma. This photograph of Company C was taken before May 9, 1864. Major William A. Boyd, who is in the photograph, died soon after being wounded on May 9th in the fighting north of Atlanta, Georgia. Surgeon Samuel S. Boyd, his brother, survived him. The city acquired the property from private owners to save it from development, and Fort Granger was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. Enjoy the 14-acre park interpretive signs, sights, and sounds. Yeah, so uh, anyway, there's uh, just another sign. Walking around some more. Yeah, and I'll read another sign or two to you that I, that I thought was interesting. Tried in the fire. Staunchly pro-Confederate, Williams County raised several large regiments in the spring of 1861, but after the fall of Nashville in February 1862, Federal regiments quickly occupied the region. They suppressed hostile Confederate sympathizers and seized buildings for hospitals, barracks, and supply depots. Local Confederate supporter May Pierre wrote, A federal force is at Franklin. Cavalry are scouting all over the country, stealing money, clothes, foraging, pressing horses, and capturing secesh soldiers. Troops sometimes commandeered slaves to help build fortifications, including Fort Granger. By February 12, 1863, the 1st Federal Regiment arrived to construct Fort Granger. Led by U.S. Colonel Emerson Opdyke, the 125th Ohio Volunteer Infantry soon found supporters among the country's quiet Unionist population, including Franklin native Dr. Daniel B. Cliff and his wife. Emboldened by the Federal Army's protection, Local Unionists held a rally for Union and Restoration in Franklin at the courthouse. Yeah, and again, man, I just love looking at these forts and thinking about how they were built and the time and energy put into them. I hope you're enjoying taking this little walk with me. And th there is one more interpretive marker that I want to try to squeeze in here before our video's over. From Slaves to Soldiers. On March 24, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln told Tennessee Military Governor Andrew Johnson, The colored population is the great available and yet unavailable of force for restoring the Union. In September 1863, Johnson gave permission to Major George Stearns to recruit free blacks and contrabands as soldiers. As part of securing emancipation, enslaved recruits were freed on enlistment. From late 1863 to the war's end, Tennessee's 20,133 United States Colored Troops, USCT, served in almost every military engagement across the state. 
Dozens of men from Williamson and Maury counties mustered in at Franklin, and several became part of Company A, 13th USCT. Before being mustered out in 1866, at least 5,107 USCT casualties suffered death, disease, and capture in Tennessee. At least 290 of these men were born in Franklin and Williams, Williamson County, with most serving in the infantry, a few in cavalry, and roughly 50 in artillery units. Former slave owners grappled with the reality of slaves as soldiers. Moscow Carter of the Carter House wrote to his younger brother Todd in March 1864, We have for the first time during the federal occupation of this town a corps of N soldiers, or as I heard a soldier call them the other day, smoked Yankees quartered in this vicinity. I think there is a company yet, though I understand it will be increased to a regiment. The 17th USCT organized in Nashville in December 1863 also had Williamson County recruits. It performed guard duty at various posts, including Franklin, until November 1864. On December 17th through 19th, this unit, along with other USCT regiments, fought the remnants of Confederate General John B. Hood's army as it moved southward after the Battle of Nashville. As U.S. quartermasters searched for Federal dead following the war, two unknown soldiers identified as members of Company K's 17th USCT were hurried to Carter's Hill in December 1864. And that is heavy. And of course, um, you know, here in Kentucky we have uh, Camp Nelson, which is uh, well known for recruiting African Americans at that time. Yeah, so that's uh, just something to think about. Great view here. Check that out. And I can just imagine Hood sending troops up this way. Yeah, just a great, great view in a great area. And again, Franklin, Spring Hill, Columbia, Hartsville, Nashville, lots of great little Civil War towns right through here. I walked off the trail a little bit just because I wanted to walk a tiny bit down this hill just just to look a little more around just a great morning we, we were out there yeah really early one morning kind of before anybody else had a chance to get out and it was just great looking around and checking out the view and Franklin is just such a neat neat little town it's it's certainly an upscale town it's popular and it's got history and it's got it's got forts like this it's got Fort Granger and just a wonderful place to be we uh, I filmed this I believe early March uh, of this year 2021 and as I've said anytime you go to a Civil War site there's just a lot of rock a lot of big solid rock areas You'd think they'd want to fight out a field somewhere where there weren't lots of rocks to fall on, but no. Yeah, lot, just lots of rocks. And as you can see from some of the video, there, uh, yeah, there's there's industry around here. Companies have moved in, but this fort is just just um, just really nice, and I'm I'm really impressed with what they've done with it, and they should be really proud. And Franklin, if you don't know, it's just a little south of Nashville. Um, I, I think of Frank. There's Franklin, and then Spring Hill, and then in Columbia. As you drive south away from Nashville, in that order, and every one of those towns has some cool history, and just pretty, pretty downtown areas. Just neat little towns, uh, and they all care about their history. But yeah, just uh, just wanted to point that out and let you see what the fort looks like. This this would be a nice place. I mean, even even if you're not a fan of the Civil War, this would just be a nice place to go and walk for a little bit if you're in the area and want some exercise, or to maybe even take a picnic lunch or something. I mean, it's just so so nice and historic. So I hope I hope you enjoyed checking out Fort Granger in Franklin, Tennessee, with me.